What up? New what England up? MMA. Brian Rossi, Relentless Rossi, in the house tonight with me. That's your camera, Brian, by the way. Which right. you know because you did set up the room kind of with me kind of, last yeah, yeah. week. <laughs> so um, tonight, I have Brian on. Oh. And we have sound. Brian, yeah. we are batting a thousand at the moment thousand. right now. So if anyone doesn't know who Brian is, because Brian's been um, kind of... Off the grid as far as the fighting circuit for yeah. a couple of years, more than a couple of years. About three years now, been out of it. Your last fight was against John Duma that's for right. the Cage Titans featherweight amateur title. That's right. That's right. Dude, you built my computer. I, you know, you and yeah. I have been every so often on Facebook. You know, you've been doing other things, which we'll get to. But you and I have been talking here and there over the years. Not much, but yeah, we, we've been staying in contact a little bit. I put out there that I needed a computer built because my laptop kept fucking up my stream, mm -hmm. which doesn't seem to be the case tonight. Um, if anything screws up tonight, let me know. Because this is a trial and error show with you yeah. tonight. Because you, I reached out to you because you messaged me and you put this computer together for me for the exact needs of what I was intended to do in here. So let's talk about... First of all, what you've been doing in these past, you know, three years since that fight with John, and why'd you get out of the fight game, and uh, and what are you doing now? Oh uh, yeah, man. Uh, right now at the moment, I just work in the car industry. You know, uh, I've always loved cars, and I always loved working on them, being under them, and stuff like that. So it was a very natural fit to go and sell them. I understood them well, so that's what I've been doing. You know, I kind of wanted to make as much money as I could, and that was a first business of of choice. You know, so uh, I got into that. Um, but yeah, man, I've uh, just been doing my thing, you know what I mean? Trying to stay out of trouble and be uh, be good in the community, you know what I'm saying? And uh, the fight game is a tough game to mimic having that fun again, you know? So you're always just looking for something to just occupy your time or just do the next thing and always have fun and stay level, you know? And that's always the tough thing as a fighter. So that's what I've been doing pretty much, just trying to stay level, keep it together, do it, do good, you know what I mean? Excellent. Well, you fought for a while. I yeah. mean, you started, you know, we've spoken. I mean, we've commentated like a fight, like Smoker Show or, uh, together. Of course. And we, we know a little bit about each other's background. Yeah. You started off way, way, way long ago. Let's talk a little bit about, you know, who you were with and who brought you up in the, in the MMA game. Uh, I actually started at a school uh, when I was really young. I started about 10 years old at uh, Dragon Lair. In Framingham, which is like, uh, if you've been around long enough, you know that everybody who came through an MMA scene locally at one point or another, that's where they ended up was Dragon Lair. For whether they were a Brazilian Jiu Jitsu champion or kickboxing champion or future MMA fighter in the UFC, you know, they all everybody stopped through there at one point or another. So that's where I ended up. And then I'm along the way, I ended up meeting Jorge Rivera and Matt Feeney and some other people. And then, you know, they ended up uh, introducing me to some other people so one thing led to another trained with some gyms you know and that's how how it started off and it was a lot of fun man i met a lot of great people so mma was awesome now looking back at jorge um yeah. was this what time around was this was this before his content uh uh the the show he was on the show so right the, when i met him he was fighter. he was uh the show was airing so i didn't even know of the show but it was airing you know and then uh come to find out i I didn't even really know about the show too much. I watched the first season. It was season. only like the second season. Right? It was the second? fourth season, oh, right. I believe. Yeah, because I, I used to watch Monday Night Raw, and then they would play The Ultimate Fighter after. So that's how I figured out the Forrest Griffin fight with Stefan Bonner. Yeah. So uh, I figured out that one. And then a few years later, you know, he's on a, he's on the show. It's pretty cool. With uh, who was it? Was it uh, Rich Franklin? I think or Rich Franklin. No, Rich Franklin came in Rich as a Franklin, guest uh, I think coach. Matt I Hughes, think as a, yeah. What, was it? No, Something yeah, like but that. they came in to the coach and then uh, yeah. he fought Rich Franklin also. Yeah, yeah, he fought Rich Franklin way back, man. He uh, <laughs> he did really well against him too, man. Rich Franklin was a was the stud back he then. He was he was a front row killer, man. Mm -hmm. He was he was a murderer's row back then. And now he's like uh, not to get off course, but Rich Franklin, he's part of one, right? One. Yeah, one. yeah. He's one of the executives over at one. He does a matchmaking, you know, PR stuff. It's fucking these he, fighters evolving. Like Rich Franklin, yeah. he was a UFC champion, and you know, and now he's a, a, you know. Doing and I believe he was a math teacher, man, back in the day. Yeah, he's smart dude. He was a yeah. math teacher who yeah. just loved the fight, and and uh, I know he he was friends with uh, George Gergel. Who I ran into, you know, maybe once or twice at Sit Your Tongue or something yeah. like that. On the Way show back in also. the day. On the show also, yes. you know what I mean? So, uh, yeah, solid. Cool stuff. So, so, all right. So, Jorge's on that. And, you know, yeah. so you, you're training with him. Who were some of the other fighters around New England that you were getting work in that were uh, in your camp? Back then, Davin Westinger was, uh, 
you know, he kind of came on quick. He only trained for six months, but then within the first two years, he was like four or five and oh. And then uh, he kind of fell off after that. And then uh, there was uh, Brett Morris as well, who was a really good amateur back in the day. And I trained with Andre as well, Sukumta. Uh, I was there, you know, his first, like, week of training, I remember. You know what I mean? He was yeah. there. He was brand new. I remember the things he used to do wrong. You know what I mean? And I remember everybody fixing it. You know what I mean? And, man, it was awesome. And then um, who are some other guys, too? Uh, I met a lot of the guys that came through Tim Burroughs as well. There was just so many oh, guys that came through. You, know, you got the, Je the Jeffries. Uh, you got the uh, Jeffries yeah, brothers. Yeah. You got, uh, who's the dude who's always in Canada, man? I always forget his name. He's uh, He fought for CES. He's also a pro wrestler as well. Oh, oh, um, 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 they're going to kill me. Um, Chuck. Chuck, uh, Chuck no, O'Neill. No, he, he's rolled as a Chuck. It's another dude. Oh, who the fuck is that? Oh, Anyone know man. out there? Tell oh, us who man, it is. Who is it? Who's I the guy that hangs out with Chuck O'Neill? And he was with a uh, Burrell dude? Yeah, he's a Burrell dude. Purple Bell. He fights in the UFC, man. He fought in the UFC. Oh, 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 Kevin Spicely. Yes. Yes. Spicely, dude. Woo. Yes. No, awesome, Eric Spicely. <laughs> That's what it was. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, they're all Triforce. Uh, Triforce. People. Triforce. Tim yeah. Burrell. Yeah, but like, yeah. You know, at one point or another, man, if you went to Tim Burrell's back in like 2012, 2011, you'd find all those guys on the map, man. Yeah. Uh, Brennan Ward as well. Uh, and who else would it be? Um, head coach over at Triforce, man. Why is my memory so bad? Oh, today? oh, well, you got Pete Jeffrey and uh, Keith. Keith. Keith and Jeffrey. Then, and then uh, Dave. No, not uh, Dave. Diamond Dave. No, heavyweight. CES heavyweight. Oh, oh, oh. Uh, um, uh, Greg Rubello. Greg Rubello, man. Yeah. Yes, you got Greg over there as well. I mean, dude, and Mike Campbell back in the day. Like, oh, yeah. This yeah. was a murderer's row on a yeah. Saturday morning. You know what I mean? It was, a, it was a lot of good times back then. No shit. And you, all right, so you evolved from there because you've been at yeah. a couple of, I mean, you you know, along your ways, you met Loco, you, you've been yeah. City Odd Tonga, you know, in and out of there. Yeah. Um, you know, how long was your amateur career? How long did you? Um, it was a while, like, man. It was like five, six years. You know, I fought on and off. Uh, you know, those times where I tried to find other things to do in life and then I'd go back to fighting, you know, and it was just one of those things I love to do it, man. You know yeah. what I mean? No matter how much I didn't want to love to do it, I love to do it. And you can't, you can't mimic that in any other way, man. You know what I mean? Ever since I was a kid, I just loved to fight, you know, and I never ran from one either. So it was just one of those things where I just enjoyed it. It wasn't, it wasn't anything emotional to me. It didn't hurt to do it only physically, you know? Yeah. Now your last fight. Was against John Duma. John Duma coming up, the amateur, young, you know, young, young, young kid, John yeah. Duma. I mean, he's Very good. probably 18, 19 years old. At I think that he was part. 20. Oh, was he? Yeah. All right, so he's coming up. Uh, I remember, you know, because Triforce is right down the street from mm -hmm. where I live, you know, so I went and interviewed John. It was like one of my first, like, interviews, yeah. like, that I went to a gym and, and talked to him, and he was fighting you. Mm -hmm. And I didn't know you at the time, you know what yeah. I mean? But it was kind of a mystery. Yeah, yeah, but, you know, I looked you up, and you just seemed like that guy's, you know, a big dude, like yeah. just solid freaking dude, but the fight dude, you yeah. you put a hurt on you know yeah. on John that night, man, for that time. I mean, he caught you in a submission, man. But bring us to that fight because that was your last fight, yeah. and from there you you know you haven't you ne you never fought in the in the cage again. Talk to us a little bit about that fight and fighting John, and what changed leaving that fight that you didn't go back until you know you still haven't been back. Yeah, uh, funny story, man. I actually went. On a vacation with my girlfriend, uh, I think it was two or three weeks before the fight, and I spent a week in New York, and I actually like stayed in the mountains over there for like a week, and I just you know hiked mountains and shit like that, like hiked trails, and it was pretty cool. And I took a week off from violence, like right before a fight. I think it was either the best thing I did or the worst. To this day, I still don't know, you know. But like uh, in that week, man, I think I just did a lot of thinking, and I think that's what ended up kind of pull pulling me away because I. Just did a lot of thinking over that weekend, and it kind of changed my perspective of fighting. And I think it was also the reason why I fought that fight so loosely. Like, I just went out there. I didn't care. I just fought it to fight. You know what I mean? I brought the fight to him, and that was my plan from day one. You know what I mean? It was just to bring the fight to him and, and not be afraid of him. You know, I know a lot of people kind of doubted me at that point. I saw a lot of people turning their backs to me a little bit, you know, saying, oh, man, you know, I don't know. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I took the fight anyways, and I said, yeah, I could beat him, man. I know I could beat him, you know, and... I went out there and I fought the way I should. I came up with my whole game plan pretty much on my own for the most part, you know. I did a lot of that. And, man, I, I fought the way I should have. And I have no regrets, man. You know what I mean? I gave John Duma my 1,000%, man. That was a great fight. Man. And he, he took it and, and he ran with my thunder, man. You know what I mean? Yeah. And that's what it is. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, man, I, and maybe people would even think that I even stopped because of it, which to me would be kind of crazy, but because it was a great fight, yeah. and I enjoyed the shit out of that fight, man, you know? And I don't know. I felt like after that night, I don't know that I would ever get that feeling like that again, you know? And it was an epic fight, man, yeah. you know? And it was just so much fun, and I felt like 
after that night, I experienced everything I wanted from fighting. You know what That's I mean? That's awesome. And awesome. there was not much more to take after that without mm -hmm. sacrificing my health to a point that it wasn't worth it. You know what I mean? And that's that's just how I walked away from that fight. It was, I didn't feel that way right away. It took a few months. You know what I mean? Yeah. But after that fight, man, I said, you know what? That was it. You know what I mean? That was that was great. I can I can I can walk away with that. You know what I mean? Awesome. Well, we stayed in touch through the years. Here, you know, these two or three years. You got a career now doing very yeah. well. Yeah. Uh, you started, you know, training a little bit, going back to, uh, you know, I think Triforce. You you go you wanted you might stop in there, but are you going back to training? What, what, what's your thought now? And when you answer that question, I'll ask you another one about you know MMA yeah. since that last fight with yeah. John. Uh no, I think I'm definitely going to go back to training. You know, my health is a lot better now. Then when I stopped, you know, my health was not great. I, I had a lot of uh, neck issues and stuff like that going on when I stopped. And um, I think I've gotten a lot better over the time. And I've been actually working out a lot with Keith. You know, and, and, and funny thing, man, I actually... TFW, made, the TFW yeah, side I went, there. Yeah, I've been training at DFW and I love the program, He's a man. motivator, dude, man. Is he not? Well, man, funny, the whole man. team. Oh, man, he's the best, dude. He is the best. Uh, I love working with Keith and the people there are awesome. And uh funny thing, too, is me and my girlfriend, because we go every morning at 6 a.m. when they were open yeah. before quarantine. But we, we would walk by every morning of the picture of John with a belt on, all bloodied up, <laughs> after I beat him up. A big smile on <laughs> the back. Every, I, yeah, yeah. A big smile. He's only, we yeah. walk by every morning. And I, and there's not one point in the training session where I don't think about that night at some point. <laughs> That's awesome. And here you are that, yeah. the same gym as him. And fucking, you know, look where, you know, John's doing well now. You oh, know dude, what I mean? He's, he's doing really good. Dude, I think he's one of the best guys uh, in that weight class coming out of the area, man. He just needs a little bit more experience to hit, like, the UFC level. Mm -hmm. Because, man, he came on so young, man. You know what I mean? That kid came up so young. So I think he's on his way, you know. I'll just to let and remind everyone out there, um, Richie Santiago is going to be calling. I'll be calling him at 9 o'clock. We'll be catching up with him, talking a little bit about uh, his fight that he had in January, his fight back yeah. from the Contender Series. And we'll be talking a little bit about the UFC this weekend and, you know, getting our all three take on that. But uh, to get back at you, yeah. let's, you know, now you're, you know, back... In MMA, you were really good at like talking MMA and you know explaining things to, pe yeah. to people on on the internet. Like you would comment on a post every so often and, and stuff like that. As far as the years you've been away, I mean, I know you've been looking at the local scene here and there. What do you think? It as far as what's happened in, in MMA since you know you left a few months after that that fight. Uh, you know, I think MMA has gone down kind of this weird path, man. You know, I think uh, there's a lot of profiting off fighters that, you know, they don't they don't get what they deserve, you know, and uh, it's, it's hard to watch sometimes, you know what I mean? It's hard to, to, to be at like a CES event sometimes for me like that, you know, because uh, a lot of it might, man, I've actually watched the movie The Wrestler. You ever seen that movie? Yeah. That's one of my best references, man. And I feel for a lot of fighters when I watch that movie because I, I know what's going on, man. You know what I mean? I know that these guys are sacrificing a lot to be there. Your family doesn't want you to do it. You know, maybe you got kids and you're you're out there, you're taking punches to the face, you're getting strolled off in a in an ambulance, you know, it's it's tough life, man. You know what I mean? So for me, it, it was hard to sit in the sidelines for for some time. You know, I think today I can probably separate myself from it a little bit better, but uh it's it's a very tough world, you know. So I do watch a lot of guys. There's a lot of guys locally that I do like uh to keep an eye on. Um uh, what's that gym down in Fall River, man? That they got Res regiment, regiment, man, when dude. Jorgen Castro fighting this yeah, weekend. Yeah, yeah, dude. Jorgen, man, he's a beast. Dude. Yeah, he's he's a beast. He reminds me of Mark Hunt. You know, there's a lot of similarities yes, yes, there to yes. Mark Hunt. Big well, he right just took out Mark Mark Hunt's dude that I last know. fight in I fucking know. Australia. So I know, man. He's he's a beast, dude, and he's got a lot of potential, man. He's he's still young in the fight game. I think mm -hmm. what's he like in the late late twenties? I think he's like thirty two or something he's, around thirty. But dude, he's in the heavyweight. Division, he's heavyweight, yeah. yeah. He can fucking he can fight, fight till, till he's 40. forty. Yeah, no problem. <laughs> he's got another eight years yeah. left in him, and I think that he's one of those dudes, man. Where like I think his technical ability still hasn't caught up to his ability to perform on the big stage, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Which is a good thing, because that means he's got a lot of potential to move forward. And he's he's got a brighter future ahead of him. And he's Excellent. got at least another good all fight. Right, hold that ahead. thought, because we're going to have to talk about it. We're going to be yeah. talking about that further. So, all right, so, <laughs> as far as, you know, what, what you've seen, the evolving of it, though, I mean, yeah. social media is crazy. The fighters yeah. are doing great on there. Things are just evolving. You know, three years is a long time. Yeah. Since you, I mean, now we got amateurs that are fighting for titles, that are getting huge sponsorships. Yeah. I mean, 
some of these guys are making like three grand uh, amateur mm -hmm. on a fight. Three grand, five grand. Some of them are real smart business people, you know, yeah. selling tickets. Was it like that? Um, you know, when you, I mean, you were, you talked about being in kind of the sleeper, you know what I mean? Yeah. Fighting here and there. So I'm sure the media yeah. game and all that, but what do you see in it? Is it, is it like a great thing? Like I think it's a great thing. I, I think it's a great thing because here, here's the thing. You get better fights more suited to you as a professional if you can sell tickets. You know, at the end of the day, that's the fight game. You know, it's been like that in boxing for years. It's like that, I'm pretty sure, in Muay Thai and overseas and stuff like that. So it, there's no reason why it would be any different here. If you have a good following, you know, they're going to eventually start tailing fights to you and, and giving you the fights to make you look good and then bring you to the next level. You know, if you sell tickets, I mean, that's going to be the goal, of course. You know, so that's very important, man, to be a business person on the side as well as being a fighter, you know, you don't want to take that hard road. I mean, I took a very hard road. You don't want to go down that road if you mm -hmm. don't have to. You know what I mean? Exactly. You got to be have a find find a good coach that's right beside you at all times. A good guy who can manage your career in the right way. Because as a fighter, you you're not there to make good decisions. You're mm -hmm. there to fight. Yeah. And you you have to have the mentality to fight anyone, anytime, anywhere, in any weight class. You know what I mean? And if you don't have that mentality, you're not a champion. You know, so you have to have that mentality at the end of the day. Not necessarily good for business. You yeah. know. So you have to have the, you have to have the right person to yeah. tell you what's the right thing to yeah, do. Yeah, exactly. And you know, in the past, uh, fighters among yourself yeah. are coaches now. They've been yeah. through it, and you've done some of that in the past. Yeah. Uh, you know, you've done some pad work with M Miguel Cuevas, a, yeah. another a new pro on the, on the horizon the scene, coming yeah. up. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, but you've been there. You've you've trained with some of these people. You've helped them along their career. Yeah. Where do you see MMA going as far as New England uh, in the future? Because it's been built so much. I mean, uh, you know, I like to give kudos to NewEnglandMMA.org because we have, you know, yeah. people are jumping on board. I mean, New England is like a heartbeat mm -hmm. of a, a, a MMA right it's now. It's a hot spot. So what do you think as far as the future of what's going on here? And, and, you know, it's a big question, but where do you see in the next, like, we get out of this pandemic, mm -hmm. where do you see New England uh, well, on the map? Eventually they're going to breed a champion, man. You know, eventually they're going to breed a champion. We haven't had that one guy to hold that big belt yet. You know what I mean? But eventually New England's going to get it, man. We have the best education in this area. You know, there's no better education than what you get in the Northeast between New England, New York, uh, some parts of Connecticut. You get great education. And on top of that, all those people kind of, they learn jiu-jitsu eventually. They learn Muay Thai. They learn MMA. They learn the fight game. And they turn into managers. They turn into coaches, school owners. You know, and you got these great education out there, man. And eventually, that's going to breed a champion in yeah. some way. And multiple champions yeah. once we get there. You know what I'm saying? And that's just the mentality of the Northeast. You know what I mean? We breed champions here, man. It's, it's the, Bel the Belichick way is ref has really... I like it. Dude, the Belichick way has reflect us, right reflected there. us in many ways, right? <laughs> awesome. Uh, what time is it? Uh, uh, 8.55. we got a couple of more minutes before I call Richie... Um, Richie um, Santiago. Yeah. Uh, Peter, what's up? Kayla Gravely, I want to say shout out to... I'll, I'll do a few shout outs. I still like, uh, oh, Mike Hersey, um, a poster right here. Jorge poster, signed. Oh, that's pretty dope. Yeah, so yeah. he won it. I also have a 24-7 Inc. magazine shirt for him. I just haven't got a chance to mail it. I'm thinking about just rolling it up like that and just put it in a priority box, right? I don't have to put it in a poster fucking thing, right? No. Everyone knows no. that. Uh, shout out to Walt. I can't even Zinfri roll it. Uh, get me that. A bunch of posters anyway. A bunch of shirts to give away at some points in the fucking podcast. But uh, special shout out to um, myself, Steve Domenico. <laughs> <laughs> but on. I'm going to put my website here uh, with that I have with Lars and Travis. Because you, ha you have to follow and go and join because we're going to be having... The New England rankings that New England MMA dot org. That's so cool. You're we're gonna do that, our man. first one. Yeah. And so we're starting, and I think a couple of weeks, yeah. which you're gonna have to go on the website. You have to be a member to, to, to vote. So yeah. we're gonna have a fan vote. We're gonna have a media, and promotions will make up a lot of the percentage of it. But the yeah. fans will be in there too. So right now we're in the process of mailing out, uh, emailing the promotions and and getting them. You know, on board and seeing yeah. who's on board. So some people want to do it, some people don't want to do it. If you don't want to do it, I mean, I don't see why. You never hit um, me up about it. Shit. Like the, the website's going to be amazing down yeah. the line, and why wouldn't you want to be a part of it? I mean, it's going to yeah. be legit. I mean, who else is doing it? 
Yeah. You know, Nobody topology doing ain't doing it. No one no. else is doing it. Topology is awful. And, you know, a lot of people might not like me as far yeah. as like my how I'm vocal on I am and a little... But you got Travis Lazat and you got Tra- uh, Lars, a, a former judge, uh, you know, fight judge for 10 mm-hmm. years, you know, oh, with wow. Kevin... Uh, you know Kevin McDonald, mm-hmm. he's uh, he's the dude that designed my website. He's the guy that's running it. He's kind of the the guy that's sending the messages out. We got three guys here that've been in MMA in New England yeah. for a long time. I mean, who the fuck? Uh, and plus, we'll have fan, fans yeah. and promotions and some other media. I mean, who else is going to do that and be that legit? Yeah, fucking tapology, sure, dog. No, so join the fucking page, be a media member, and vote. How's yeah. that sound? Sounds good. <laughs> So I'm going to put the website right now, and then we're going to give Richard Santiago a call because Richard had a fight that was uh, postponed. He was fighting for the CES flyweight title mm-hmm. that um, shut one, I think that's his name, against Johnny, uh, Mr. Nice Guy Lopez, mm-hmm. the open title. Now Richie was awarded the, you know, to go against him, and that fight got canceled. So we're going to talk about that and all that other stuff. Let me put this fucking website Sorry, New England MMA.org. Now I'm going to put this here and don't join it yet because then you'll leave the podcast. Join it after or whatever. But you better get on there because if I don't see about 20 clicks today because we, we had about 15 people watching and we got people coming and going. If I don't have at least 15 new people on that site tonight, I'm not going to be happy. How's that sound? Sounds good. <laughs> Sounds demanding. All right. I'm going to call Richie Santiago right now, and we're going to uh, talk to Richie about what's been going on. Is this him? Who's that? Somebody is messaging me. Um, somebody, I, I at least get like two Facebook Messenger messages while I'm podcasting, and people know I'm podcasting. They just do it to bust my balls. I'm going to call them out someday, but not tonight. All right, call it now, Richie. So, you haven't seen or talked to Richie in, in some time. You you had no. Tri- I seen dude. I actually seen him not too long ago. Oh, like did a month you? Ago. All right, cool. All right, all right. He's responding. He, I seen him at Triforce. All right. Yeah. All right. Yeah, he's been with them. I think uh, two fights. Yeah. I think, or, I think the contender fight might him, have been man. his first one, huh? Great move for him. Oh, definitely, definitely. Yeah, you know, good, good spot for him. He's got so many options, so many training partners there. Then he yeah. go to Lozon. He's got good on a guidance, man. Shit. You know. All right, he didn't say okay, but I'm gonna call him anyway if he's ready or not. Yeah, hello. Wow, he answered right away. What's up, Rich? What up? Hey, I'm waiting for you guys. What's going on? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I gotta get your picture up here, but oh, that was your fight. We don't want to put that up yet. Facebook might block us. Um, Richie, thanks for coming on, man. Uh, you've been tuning in, waiting, waiting your turn. But I had to catch up with Brian. But you and Brian have a little history together, man. Uh, let's let's talk a little bit about how you and Brian, uh, how, how you each know each other uh, from the early days. Yeah, for sure. Me and me and Brian go way back. Um, it, it was actually I was listening to the podcast before you guys called me, but like uh, when he was telling stories about like. Um, you know, we used to be back with Jorge and uh, Brett Morris was there. Brian was there. when I first started. Brian was already like starting to like teach people stuff, so he was like one of the guys who was already like established. And um, Brett Morris was a guy who I went to high school with. Yeah. And um, honestly, if it wasn't for Brett, like I probably would have never, you know, met the people I met because Brett, me and him went to high school together. He was a senior when I was a freshman. And, um, you know, I used to follow him on Facebook and I would see him and he was like the only guy that I knew that was like a legit fighter. So it was like so cool to me because I didn't know anybody else. And, um, yeah, so Brett was the guy that introduced me to George Jorge and, uh, yeah. And then I met Rossi and then, you know, rest is history, I guess. Excellent. Now talking to Brian, his last fight was against John Duma, one of your main training partners at Triforce now. Richie, you you know you were part of uh, Cage Titans back in the day as far as an amateur fighter. Um, what was it like back then? Brett was Brian. Brian had to be fighting about the same time you were as an amateur, correct? Yeah, uh, yeah, around the same time. Around um, 
we, we kind of came up around the same time. Uh, I think he said like he was kind of off and on for a little while, but I remember he got on a big run there. We got on a, we both got on a big run around the same time. Yeah. Um, but when he, when he fought Duma, that was actually the first time I commented, commentated at Cage Titans. <laughs> it was like <laughs> right off the bat, it was like one of the craziest fights I'd ever seen. And it was the first time I ever got to commentate. So it was like so crazy. It was nuts. Then. Now back then, John Duma, you know, young kid, not, not, you know, not incredibly amount of uh, fights under his belt, but did you know John as far as um, the circuit, or was he fairly uh, a new face at over there? Yeah, I knew him a little bit. Um, at the time, um, I was I wasn't training at Triforce full time yet, but I was cross training with them a little bit. So I knew Duma a little bit. Um, I probably knew Rossi a little more at that point. Um, so I kind of I didn't really know how that fight was going to go. <laughs> All right, um, but I knew it was going to be a banger. Um, but yeah, I mean, that was one of those fights where Rossi put it on him and then Duma kind of came from behind out of nowhere, you know, it could have gone either way. It was crazy. Yeah, it was, it was nuts. I mean, it, you know, Brian talked about, I mean, like Brian said, he gave, you know, over a thousand percent in that fight <laughs> and, and, you know, it looked like the finish was near and then fucking Duma right there, you know, Just pulled up. it off yeah. and that's why it makes it such an, a fucking amazing fight, man. Yeah. I mean. That's what fighting's about. At, at any time, the the fight can change, man. It's fucking yeah. great. That's that's the fight game, man. So Richie, let's um, you know, enough about Brian. We'll get back to him later. But we're gonna talk to you a little bit about what's been going on with you. And uh, dude, you had a huge opportunity coming off um a big win back at CES after your contender uh, series uh, appearance. You had a second round finish there. We do have the fight, but I'm gonna play that you know a, a little after this in case Facebook shuts me down. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I want to, you know, I only got the finish in there, so that might be all right. Um, but, dude, you had you had that finish in the second round in, in January, and then you get a title opportunity in April before really any of the stuff was really, uh, you know, with the virus coming along, man. You know, what's it been like, and, and how did it feel to, you know, have that fight postponed and, and kind of sit and idle and t until the world opens up again? Yeah, it was it was crazy, man. Because you know, obviously January, kind of my comeback fight after the contender series, after the big injury, uh, my first fight back. You know, it went well. Um, won the fight, finished the fight, and then afterwards, then I was kind of like thinking about, okay, what are we gonna do next? I kind of had my eye on that flyweight title fight, anyways, and but I was kind of thinking about it, like, do I want to fight either of these guys? You know, I know Johnny Lopez. Johnny Lopez is a good guy. He's a friend of mine, so I I, I wasn't really sure if I was gonna call him out or anything, you know, just out of respect. Uh, but then when Blaine won, I was kind of just thinking about it, like maybe does that make sense, you know? And for me, you know, I've been fighting at bantamweight because it's been tough for me to make flyweight, so. I knew I had, it, it had to make sense. If I was going to make the weight, it had to be for a title. It had to make sense. It had to be something big. So, you know, I kind of looked at Blaine's fights, and I thought, you know, he, he's he's a tough guy, but he's got some holes in his game, and I think he's beatable. And, you know, I've decided, you know what, I'm going to call this guy up. So I, I went to CES. I asked them what they think about it. They were all for it. And, uh, yeah, they signed the fight, and, man, I was, I was so hyped. You know, finally, not only – getting the title shot but you know being the main event and being the main event of this card that was stacking up yes. to be insane andre sukuntai you know? was on that card we have uh you know who else was on another former ufc uh, kyle, Bach, kyle kyle coming down um oh yeah, my Sweet god was on the card yeah yeah card, so man. you know i mean so for me to be at the top of that card that was pretty crazy so, so. you know richie here we are you know and then you know we're watching social media and, you know, we have Cage Titans has got these back-to-back -back shows coming, the, you know, the weekend of the uh, April 4th, I do believe. You know, you got to fight for the title three weeks later. You know, April's looking like a friggin' hell of a night for New England MMA because we got Neff. We got, um, I think we had um, Combat Zone 2 maybe thrown in there too. Yeah, on the 18th, yeah. Dude, and then, you know, I didn't think it was real as far as shutting down the gyms until Triforce and Pete... And they made an announcement that they were going to shut down the gym for a week. I went, right, and it was literally what, like three weeks or or a little it more happened, before. It honestly, it happened so quick because we were training and everything was fine, and then you know things started like the news start things started popping up on the news, 
And then I remember like this one day I went into the gym and um, Megan Jeffrey, uh, Pete, Pete's wife, she kind of like was taking people aside and just telling everybody like, hey, like this this um, COVID thing is a big deal. Like we're taking it seriously. She's a nurse. So yeah, she would know. And um, so she was kind of like telling everybody like, hey, listen, we're going to do what we can. But I mean, we don't know what's going to happen. And sure enough, like two, three days later, we get the notice like, oh, hey, we're going to close up for a couple weeks. And then I was like, all right, well, I guess we're going to close till further notice. And it was just it just happened so quick. It was crazy. Yeah. And I and I talked to Pete yesterday. I, I had a, you know, a long conversation with him. We touched base about, you know, how he's how they're coping with it, how they keep an online classes going, how he's how he's still, you know, you know, still in the game but how he misses it so much man how i know you're with your girlfriend and you're doing a lot of stuff in the house i see you guys building friggin have you made a chimney yet have you built an inside chimney because you know no even before the virus and and that you know the quarantine richie and his girlfriend lilith would build they were like always building something they were always like putting, <laughs> putting a table together an entertainment system or something dude what have you been doing how you been staying busy and i i know you're about 170 pounds right now don't lie Oh, dude, come on. <laughs> nah, I'm about, I'm sitting pretty at like 161, 162. Um, but yeah, no, like you said, you know, uh, we stay busy over here. You know, she's always working on projects. She's always got something going on. Um, she was just staining some wood and spilled some stain on the ground. She was flipping out. I don't even know what she's making, but <laughs> yeah, so we stay busy over here. Um, we've been doing that to pass the time. Um, but yeah, no. What Look at the last about? comment. Remember. Awesome. Um, yeah, so that's awesome. Bro, how how you been keeping up uh, or keeping in touch with um with your you know, your team and, and how 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 you guys doing it? How you staying put since you guys, you know, you just got back in the game after that fight in January. You got the title shot. How you staying active and, and how you staying kind of you know, not ready to go, but you know, not you know, I don't know what to call it. It's never happened before. Right, so, yeah, it's just, we've never seen anything like this before. But, yeah, it's, it's just been crazy. Like, I've been trying to, like, you know, just work out on my own, do my own thing. You know, it's so hard because, like, I'm not the type of person where, like, I, I you know, work out on my own. Like, I don't really, like, I don't, if I don't have jujitsu or MMA, like, I don't go to, like, Planet Fitness and work out. Like, MMA, jiu-jitsu, like, that is me working out. So if I don't have that, it's it's fucking tough for me to work out. So, well, you know, I'm doing what I can, obviously, but it's not the same. Yeah, well, talking to Pete yesterday, I mean, he's, you know, his wife is a big part of not only helping manage uh, Triforce, but she, I think she's coaches one of the women's uh, classes, and she's a blue belt in jiu-jitsu. So he's getting a little work in, at least with her, as far as, you know, be able to go over techniques and keep uh, the mind fresh. I know Lilith throws on the, you know, the gi every so often. Are, are you, uh, are you uh, wrestling her up and putting her in, uh, you know, arm bars or anything like that? Or any, any training together with her? Yeah, we can. We, um, we have a mat that we break out every once in a while. And, you know, I try to... It starts out with, like, drilling and me teaching her a couple moves, and then I want to roll, and it just escalates until she doesn't want to roll anymore. Yeah. Like, like, but, pl- you know, like playing with a little puppy that's like, all right, I had enough. I got to get out of here. Right, right. But, yeah, but we'll, we'll do, like, um, she, she, does, she does kickboxing, too, so we'll do, like, we'll do some pads and stuff, so that's always fun. Excellent, excellent, yeah, man. Um, well, dude. The weekend is coming and it's fight week and we haven't heard we haven't heard that in some time, bro. We got two guys fighting on this card, which looks like ninety five percent sure it's gonna happen. But you know, until I see no, them no. walk down, you know, the the, the lane they're getting ready. I mean, until the ref says Yeah, go. exactly, exactly, dude. <laughs> how how you feeling about the weekend and and what's that make a fighter that you know is is active feel like to know that the UFC is is going forward and is gonna be fighting fighting on. Oh, dude, I can't wait. Like, we haven't had fights. It's been so long yeah, since we had fights. I've been freaking, I've been, you know, I've already watched Tiger Kings like three times over, so I can't watch that again. So I've just been watching like old fights and like whatever fight related stuff I can watch. So I'm, I cannot wait to watch fights this weekend. It's going to be awesome. And it's an amazing card. 
Yeah, and two of your, you know, two of your, I would say training partners, but Jorgen would like eat you in there. But um, <laughs> I mean, you, you know, Jorgen's been in and out of Triforce. You get some work in there with Rebello and some of the big guys there. But you know, um, Calvin is in and out of uh, Lozans there, getting work. So you had to cross paths with them, at least have some conversation, man. How are you feeling about them in there and and being that? Representing New England in a card like this, that's it's it's basically history. It's the first card back, yeah. A- after after history, the pandemic, yeah, yeah, it's pretty crazy, yeah. And yeah, like I said, I'm I'm, I'm friends with, I'm friends with both guys. You know, I trained with uh, Calvin over at Lozans. Um, I've known I've known Yard for a long time in the game, so you know it's it's awesome to see these guys come back on this on this card. And they both have, you know, pretty crazy matchups. You know, Jorgen's taking on Greg Hardy, and um, uh, Calvin fighting Jeremy Stevens, which was a fight that's, you know, been a long time in the making. I think it's gotten canceled like twice now. So, I mean, I'm I'm pumped to see them both do work. I think both of them have they both stack up really well with their opponents, and I think you know I think we could very well come out two and zero this weekend. Huge two and zero, and then this. What, like three more cards after that or something like that? Yeah. yeah, they're doing, what are they doing? Like, it's going to be this Saturday, next Wednesday, and then the following Saturday. Like Unreal. The, the, the same uh, refing crew, I think everyone, the same personnel, except for the fighters and the coaches and anyone involved with them. It's going to be like a revolving yeah. door. Like, some, you know, most of the same staff and everyone's going to yeah. be there, except for the, yeah. the fighters, which is unbelievable. What are you thinking about? Uh, watching a fight without a crowd there. And, uh, you know, Pete and I, we touched a little bit on that yesterday. What's your thought about being able to hear the the action, the you know, the the impact, and hearing the coaches give out instructions while the fights are going? I think it's cool. I mean, I, you know, um, I was to, like, I'm sure probably Pete probably told you, like, you know, when we were at Contenders, you know, it's a very different atmosphere of not having a big crowd. And, you know, you can hear each coach yelling at their fighter, you can, you can hear, hear everything. So I know what it's like as a viewer, as a fan, I think it's going to be really cool because then you can kind of hear the shots more and, and you can, you can hear their corners and see what, you know, what's going through their coaches head as, as the fights Way going better. on. So I think it's going to be really cool to see a really high level card this weekend with you, no audience. Yeah. And the yeah. card that we did witness was the one in Brazil and it was like brand new. It was like when, you know, the, the only card they let go and they, there was no crowd there, but it wasn't the, the card that we have here. I mean, the, just yeah. like the, just like the energy of us willing this card to go on is going to be enough in that, in that <laughs> wherever, you know, wherever they're having, I don't even know what the name of it or, or wherever they're having it. It's in Florida. Correct? Yeah. It's in Jacksonville. Yeah. I mean, so, Florida. you know, who cares? It could be in someone's backyard Florida, at this point. So, um, Richie, as far as, um, just to get back at CES before we, you know, touch on this a little bit and let you go, uh, as far as the CES, is that, you know, when they, we don't know when regional MMA is going to come back. Like, we're talking to Pete yesterday. That's going to be one of the last phases that comes in, you know, as far as, you know, getting things open. And, and the gym's going to open for the fights to happen because the, you fight is going to get back in there and get some work. It isn't like you can just get thrown into a, a fight unless it's in the backyard right now, which might possibly happen until possibly. the real card comes. Uh, hey, hey. Uh, but... <laughs> Richie, what was, what was my question again? I totally forgot. Uh, CES. Oh, oh, CES. As far as the title, is that something that's still there for when CES does come out with their next card? I mean, I understand that you could get a call up or that UFC could tell you to get ready uh, for a fight down the line, but is that still on the table and is that still uh, there for you when, uh, when we're ready to fight again? Yeah, sure. I mean, yeah, like, um, you know, just to backtrack it, it was like, it was crazy because it was, you know, and like you said, in April when it was kind of when, when Cage Titans, when our double night got canceled, then I kind of knew the writing was on the wall. Like, okay, my fight's going to get canceled. And, um, then like a week after that, then they kind of, you know, made it official. Like, yeah, we're canceling. We're going to postpone. And, you know, they were very, like, optimistic about it. They were saying, like, yeah, we're going to shoot for, like, late May, like, June or whatever. And I was like, cool. So I was, like, I was thinking, like, you know, I got to keep working now, stay in shape. Um, but then, you know, it got to the point where it was just, like, nobody knows when this is going to clear up. So 
we have no idea when we're going to fight. Um, so yeah, so now like I'm kind of thinking about it now and it's like, yeah, I absolutely want the title fight and, um, but it's got to be in the right circumstance. You know, yeah. I can't, you know, it can't be like they left the bands or they left the restrictions and then, Oh, Hey, you're fighting in two weeks. Like, yeah. No, can't be doing that. we understand you know, that. It's, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's got to be like, they got to give me like, you know, at least eight weeks or so. And yeah. I can get everything right. And, and you know, good camp and fight. Exactly. You didn't get to this point to make, you know, hasty decisions. I mean, you know, you're still a young dude and why not wait for the time is right. I mean, like you said, be ready. It's a, it's, it's, this fight, whether you know it's for the title or you get a shot at the UFC, this next fight is your most important fight. So it's gonna have a thousand percent going behind it. For sure, yeah. And um, uh, what was I gonna say? Um, but yeah. So like as of right now, you know everything's up in the air. We don't really know what's gonna happen, and it sucks too because it was like I had such big plans for 2020. You know, <laughs> it was like I wanted to. You know, my plan was to fight in January, fight in April. You know, try to fight in June. If I didn't get in the fight in the June, I was going to try to fight on contenders in the summer. So it was like, you know, I had such big plans and then everything gets derailed. You know, it sucks. Um, what was the uh, last thing for him? Oh, Richie. All right. This is going to be the last thing be- with you because you mentioned it. And you know I've been frigging all over social media with uh, the Tiger King. And you did mention Tiger King that you've been watching fucking Tiger King. What do you oh, think about... Nicholas Gage. Carol Bassing killed her husband. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think about? All right. So, yeah. what do you think about um, Nicholas Cage? Do I have it right here? Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Let me get your fucking picture out of there. Get out of there, Richie. What do you think about? Have you been seeing my memes out there about how much I look like the Tiger King and how much I can sound like that motherfucker? Yes, I think you're perfect. I think if I think Dude, that's exactly what I thought. Hollywood comes calling, you got to answer the call because you're perfect. Well, here's the problem, and I'm going to play the video right now. Some motherfucker <laughs> took my role, and his name is oh, no. Nicolas Cage. You didn't see the news? No, I, I, I heard a rumor about that, but I didn't know if that was real. Or yeah, what. well, you know, someone's fucking with me because Nicolas Cage took my thing, and here's my video to him. Hopefully, Nicolas Cage? Right. You're taking everything I work for, motherfucker. I'm the real Tiger King. And fuck Carol Baskin. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, I'll play it for you later. So I anyway, that was, all right, so that was my message to Nicolas Cage. So anyway, uh, did you see that, Richie? When, when I called out Nicolas Cage? Yeah, I did see the video. All right, so I put it on YouTube, right? And I told everyone to go viral. It. It's up to like 300 views on YouTube. My interviews don't nice. get that. My fucking nothing gets that. <laughs> My 10 second <laughs> plead to fight fucking Nicolas Cage got fucking 300 views on YouTube in like fucking 30 hours. I'm like, you motherfucker. I got to stop putting fucking calling everyone out fucking as the Tiger King. So yep. with with that said, Rich, man, uh, anything else you want to say before I let you go? And uh, I end this uh, show with Brian talking about uh, UFC and and uh getting out of here yeah you know thanks uh thanks as always thanks for having me on uh it's good to catch up with you guys um always um but yeah you know what 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 can i say you know everybody stay safe out there stay strong you know we'll go back to normal eventually we don't know when but hopefully we'll go back to normal get back to training we can do what we do Excellent. Well, Rich, you know, when they, uh, you know, I can only have one person in here and Brian is an essential worker. So that's the only reason why he's kind of in here. And I sprayed him down with a fucking disinfectant hose before he came in this room. But I know, you know, down the line when we're opened up again, uh, the room podcast is a whole new uh, animal because Brian put my computer together. We got a lot of stuff coming in here that's going to be hooked up. So I'd I'd love to have you down here again and, uh, you know, talk about that next fight that's coming for you. Awesome. Can't wait. All right, brother. You have a great night, man, and uh, we'll see you real soon, bro. All right. You too. Bye, guys. How we going, Rich? There you go. That was awesome. That was awesome. Awesome. You know, another thing about Richie is that, um, you know, not only isn't he, isn't he fighting. Oh, that's your name. That's his fucking shit. Oh, he's not only not fighting, but he's doing commentary for Cage Titans, doing a yeah. lot of stuff for Mike behind the scenes. And, and, you know, so, you know, he's missing a couple of big things right there. Oh, that, all right, it's already out of there. So I was going to play his fight, but I'm afraid, dude. You know what I mean? I Like, 
I was gonna play like the end of it and when he was like beating the yeah. hell out of the guy and then uh, you know grinding pong but you know the show was going well I didn't want to interrupt it even though I'm recording it I'm gonna put it on YouTube but it's not the yeah. same it's not the same so Brian um, last thing with you you're building PCs now and your dude right here someone's laughing clock we talked about at the beginning of the show that you know I reached out for you, with you about what I needed. Yeah. Let's talk about what you know. I called you. We talked. You knew I needed a streaming thing, basically just the stream. You know, a couple of little things in there, editing and stuff like yeah. that. But mainly so my stream doesn't die and I can have a you know evolve with the show and add things and learn things and add yeah. edits and all that other good shit. Tell me what you did for me and and how you know how to do this and and and. It's something that you're looking to do more of because you hooked up with another guy or two yeah. and building another PC for them. So tell, tell us how this happened. Uh, well, honestly, I was just trying to help you from making a bad decision. Yeah. So uh, I <laughs> yeah, because actually... you, saw, you saw my post, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. So uh, I actually started. Uh, I actually do what's called sim racing. Uh, you, you know, it's virtual racing. It's iRacing, racing and stuff like that. It's gaining a lot of popularity right now. Like NASCAR is doing it. Indy's doing it. There's a lot of celebrity drivers doing it all over the place. But I've been doing it for a while. And uh, it's just part of the hobby. You just have to kind of know what to do with computers. There's times you have to speed them up. There's times where you have to add stuff to it, make them a little bit better, a little bit more power. You have to draw a little bit more from it. So along the way, I just learned some good basics of PC. You know, I still have a lot to learn myself. I'd say I'm maybe a blue belt in PC. You That's know what awesome. I mean? But That's fucking if awesome. That, you know martial artist. I mean? But like... Uh, <laughs> uh, overall, like I just wanted to help you out. Make, make sure that you get the right system, get the right thing going. Get you in a good system in order that's going to be able to process the information that you need for this podcast. Because you've got, what, like 15 freaking things hooked up to it? So yeah, you, you need and something. more. Yeah, that you I, need that something that can, that can take all that information and put it out in a clear way, which you see with the podcast. I mean, it's a lot better. You're still yeah. working on it, but the clarity and the, and the consistency, the, the reliability. No, I don't think there's any crackling or anything tonight. Exactly. And I've been able to like, you know, put pictures in, in and out and not have any issues. Excuse yeah. me. So we just built you a system that was perfect for that. I mean, I just take some of the same principle principles from from sim racing and gaming, uh, and I just put it into your 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 editing and your streaming because that's it's just processing of information, you know. So uh, I just put the same principles to it, and you know, you got you a good system for a good price. And you and I talked a lot, like yeah. going back and forth. You're like, oh, how much, you know, how many monitors you're gonna be around? What do you think, you know? Blah, yeah. blah, blah. And we would went around back back and forth for a while, and then you came back with. You know, here and there, you know, a price. We're back and mm -hmm. forth. What do you look at the span? Like I don't, I'm blind knowing what, because yeah, I go to fucking Best Buy and they got a computer in there for two grand. I'm like, yeah, wow, you know, like, but two grand in Best Buy, yeah, it's probably a you thousand. can get that. Yes, exactly. <laughs> you can build one, yeah, for the same price mm -hmm. and with better parts, as you were like talking about. Like you and you search, you go and get the what you need. It yeah. isn't like. Everything's the same brand. I don't know how computers work, but yeah. you know what I mean. They, you go there and you buy everything yeah. separately, and you talk talk to me and said, "What can you afford? And what do you want to spend? And what do you want to do?" And right from there, it basically was, I say a a, a week before yeah. you and I I started ordering the pots because yeah. basically I was going to spend my stimulus check on it yeah. because I was I'm still working. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? So I'm not. You know what I mean? I used it for there. And it took basically a week to order the pots and mm. another week from the come in and it basically put, took you a day, but then you wanted the weekend to, to test it and yeah. run your shit on it. You How many, you know, you built your own computer and stuff like that, but... So it's technically, yours was technically my second one. So I, I bought like a used one just to try to get myself into that world, just try to understand it. So I didn't even know where to start to build a new one by yeah. myself. So I bought a used one. You know, I kind of dug through it a little bit, figured it out. Uh, I come from a background of just messing around with cars, too. Like, I've always okay. loved to mess around yeah, with cars. Yeah, because you were so. playing with, uh, the, yeah. you know, the Honda. Like, you yeah. were making, like, little fucking sports cars yeah, before. Was, you. I swapped the engine on my Honda, <laughs> yeah, you know? Yeah. Uh, but, like, uh, it's it's a lot easier to do it in a computer. It's cleaner. It's easier. It's not as heavy-duty with tools. But it's the same principles. You know what I mean? It's just getting components and just d taking, drawing the, mo the most out of it that you can. Same principles. It's the same thing, honestly. But, like, uh, so... All I did was I took apart what was not good enough and I replaced it with what was good enough. And through that, I learned the basics. You know what I mean? And I was very confident with what I could do because the first time I hit the power button, thing turned on. I was surprised myself. I mean, I was like, wow, That's I couldn't awesome. believe it. That's but what like, I do with this podcast. Like yeah. when I get sound, I'm like, oh, awesome. 
Yeah, it feels good, doesn't it? Yeah, it, it does it. So, yes. like, when on a computer, it's a little bit more escalated. Remember how I was telling you, like, I've always been trying to find something that's going to give me the same satisfaction as fighting. Nothing yeah. comes close, but, you know, when you put some, something together, like a computer or something like that, there's something strategic about it that's very similar to winning a fight strategically. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, there's a, there's a very good similarity there. And then there's some, you know, you get some uh, award from it, what you created and what you're doing for someone, because look at, t- you know, tonight, this is... Let me just tell you, this is fucking like 30% of what this is going to look, what's yeah. going to be going on down the line once I learn what's going on and I can yeah. Skype and video people in at the same time, a couple of people here, yeah. have things flash in, you know, have, you know, a bunch of shit. Yeah. You know, but I come from a, uh, I, I was a drummer for 25 years. Mm-hmm. And what I learned was through drumming and through, you know, just, I think less is more sometimes. Of course. You know what I mean? You don't need all the bling bling and thing. I mean, no. people... You know, you might think you need all that because that's the way you think. Like, that's, yeah. you know, me, I'm da, 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 da. But the people watching, I mean, they're, you know, it's a whole not- thing of what they're seeing. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? So I get a little too much on the bling sometimes. So here, I'm learning less is more. On the drums, I was I did the same thing. Less is more. Less yeah. is more. Here, I got to learn the same thing. The only problem is, I'm so, I look like a sponge. So I'm like, bah, bah, yeah. bah, you know, once I tone it down and learn more, it'll be, you know. Yeah, but that's good that you have that mentality though for computers because these things are capable of them. I mean, you'd be really surprised with what this thing is capable of. You could probably run uh, your YouTube, you could run Facebook, you could run Twitch, uh, OBS, all Stream at once. Stream a lot of places, like, of course. At once, yeah. You got you got six cores to work with, so like you you you're not even tapping into fifteen percent of what this thing's capable yeah. of. And you know what I mean? That's what I learned. It's a progression. Just like yeah. you always learn. Like you said, martial arts. You're a blue belt in fucking you know, tech shit. Yeah. I'm a minus white belt, but <laughs> I run a pretty good podcast. I mean, yeah, you if, if you look, I mean, I do everything myself. All the yeah. editing. And I learned everything I, I did here as, as far as controlling it and learning how to hook it up. Mm-hmm. Because if you look at my podcast, the three before this, everything was breaking up but and yeah. i thought it was me i'm like what mm-hmm. am i doing it wrong but you look at tonight everything's kind of running smooth and so it makes me feel better yeah that i have like it was the same thing when i used to play drums yeah you can have a shitty kit and and be great and play great things break on you it's not the same you know what i mean yeah. but, but you're good enough to to put a band-aid on it and make it but it takes away from the playing when you're concentrating on other things what you did for me Took away from, you know, worrying so much. You know what I mean? Like, now Absolutely. it's like, I just press buttons and now I know I have the power. Yeah. The fucking power. So, this is something you want to do a little bit now because you got along with Clark and now you're building him because mm-hmm. he's a gamer and a, yeah. he does a lot of streaming and, and playing yeah. games. So, you're doing that for him. So, yeah. it's... He's building a badass piece. Yeah, man. you he's, told me. He's uh, he's dropping like a good fifteen hundred bucks, man. You know what I mean? Like, he's doing all channel right. support or something. Hey, whatever. <laughs> they're not listening. <laughs> so he's you're building him a computer for exact specs of what he wants yeah. and what he told you exactly what he needs yeah. it for. You know, he's talked to me and like, oh, your buddy's by uh, you know building me a computer because he follows me on Facebook and he watches the podcast like yeah, he is tonight. Absolutely. So he sees me evolving and he knew I was getting a computer put together so he got in touch with you this is something you want to do yeah along with you know making a bunch of money with the car industry too yeah man i just enjoy fun things man you know what i mean i enjoy building things uh you know things that i can actually physically build myself i've gotten way over my head sometimes on projects but you know computers are fun they're very easy once you understand it you know it's just going through the process of understanding it but uh yeah i want to continue to do that you know i want to build pcs for gamers streamers uh, anybody who does any kind of video editing, uh, you know, there's several people that do a lot of things with computers. You know, I, I, I do uh, racing simulators and car simulators myself. You know, it's, it's a very niche market. So if I could just take the PC side of it and build some PCs and get that going as a side business, maybe as a full time business, you know, I, I enjoy the point of sale. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And I, I asked you the questions and the reason why I knew what questions to ask you is I literally asked you the same questions as I would ask a person who's trying to buy a vehicle. Yeah, there wasn't many. I mean, they were basic and what you blah, 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 yeah. blah, and then we went from there. Which Absolutely. You know, it's a process of elimination. Yeah. You know what I mean? And there's a million parts out there but I need to know what you need specifically. You know what I mean? So we did that. We went through that process and you got a perfect system for what you need. Exactly. You know I, I mean? wish I could show it to you and I will down the line because 
Uh, you know, you and I are still speaking about because the show is still evolving. I still yeah. aren't done. I have things on. I get a 4K camera yeah. that I'm going to be placing these with. But mm -hmm. I did buy another one, which I'm going to be putting above uh, my other monitor there yeah. on the wall, which is going to take a whole room uh, video. So I'll have three camera angles for gas, me, yeah. and the whole room itself, which will be great if I'm doing a fight companion of a local fight. If I have a bunch of, you know, maybe four or five guys from the same team in here. You know what I mean? So you kind of put in a you you developed a monster here, man. I'm gonna yeah. have a fucking New England Joe Rogan kind of yeah. you know podcast. You here probably you have a more powerful computer than Joe Rogan has oh, on his podcast. I'd like to hear that. <laughs> <laughs> probably, you know, he's probably running with an Apple. If, if I listen to this podcast, I know he's got. Uh, awesome. And you yeah, have more power saying, to draw from this thing too, man. Yeah, he's saying it's Chris Claire clock there, man. So, dude, uh, uh, let me just check my Instagrams because we did go live on Instagram. I want to make sure because um, it only goes an hour on Instagram. Yeah, yeah. And I want to make sure it saves to my story for 24 hours. Are you, yes, it shut down. I, think. I hope my battery didn't run out. Oh, it did. Did it? That happens. You know what happens when my battery runs out? Oh, wait, it shut down. Um, you know what it does? It doesn't save the video, which is cool. I got to see it live, so I could kill us. Yeah. You know what I mean? But it was cool. Uh, just to let everyone know what I'm doing, I went live on Instagram, too, with my phone. And, uh, you know, it showed the raw side of the podcast. But what happens is Instagram only records live for an hour, and then uh, it stops. And then you got to save the video. Well, my battery died uh, at the end, and it didn't allow me to save it, which uh, is all right. So, yeah, it died. See how I know these things? Hey. Um, with that said, Brian, we uh, we went about an hour here, which is pretty mm -hmm. fucking cool, man. We uh, yeah. talked MMA. We talked uh, UFC. All right, let's right, one last thing before we go. Let's put the UFC card up here before uh, we go. And then I'm going to... Because I just want to get your opinion on... Where is it? There it is. Your opinion on these fights because... Um, We'll just go over a couple of them. Because you got Donald Cerrone and, and Pettis, who fought before. Yeah. Pettis took him out with, a, I think, a liver shot or a, a nice kick. And a, yeah, nice, that was way back in the day. Long, they they yeah. fought two times before. Yeah, at the WC. They fought at the WC came, and, and then, then they fought the, the UFC. UFC. Yeah. They might have even fought two times in the WC. I don't remember, but I think they fought two or three times prior. So this is a fucking huge Kai. We got fucking Hall against... Oh, yeah, Jake, Uriah I Hall mean, versus Jacare, man. That's a big fight, man. I mean, where'd that that's come from? Fight. Where yeah. the fuck that fight come from? Yeah, that's a great fight. That's well, a great matchup. We're Doom is in there, too. I mean, we haven't seen him in a little while, but you know that's going to be fucking a brawl. And this dude yeah. right here, is that the Russian dude that... Yeah. Yeah, he's fucking nuts. Uh, so, <laughs> sorry, man. It's, it's getting late. I can swear now. Uh, you got Henry... Henry Sejudo. Yeah. Yeah. Versus uh, Dominic Domin Cruz. Yeah. The, there's all big guys on this fucking card. Yeah, Look at you, Uncle Castro, heavyweight, heavyweight there. Who else we got over? Heavyweights here. A lot of good the women fights, right man. here, which is cool. Women are getting in there. Karate Hardy. Did you see my picture with her? Hold it. She was holding my head with Holly. Yeah, oh, yeah. I seen the one John. Oh, Jones. it's right there. There's a head right there. <laughs> I like the John Jones one, man. Yeah, he's holding it with the pen. That's authentic. That's real. That's that's so he, John that's Jones. Was, that's signed by all them on the back too. Oh, really? Yeah, they signed it all at the gym. Oh, that's awesome. Shout out to Taylor Thompson for getting that. You gotta love John Jones, man. Oh, he Shout had fun with it, Jones. man. He's probably what the fuck is this thing? He was like, I'll show you. Yeah. I'll sign it. Put it that's genuine book. John, right Even there. Even though you know, I think he's an asshole sometimes, but you can't. He's probably a hell of a guy. Hey, when you're you that know, good, who cares? He's a pottier, you know what I mean? What do you know? <laughs> uh, but, all right. What do you got there? What's that? Gaethje and uh, Ferguson. Man, I got Ooh. Gaethje, man. I'm going to take Gaethje because I think Ferguson's just, he's a little older. He's caught weight twice. Yeah, he's In the last, like, three and a half weeks. Yeah, and he has a, he has a hard time staying healthy, too. So I'm actually going to go with Gaethje. I think Gaethje's a little bit younger, a little bit more on fire. Uh, he's just a very... He's a very tough guy to beat. I mean, he's all over the place a little bit with his style. But I think he's going to be able to get over Ferguson. Excellent. All right. Uh, right here. Cujo and uh, Cujo. Uh, I'm going to go with Cejudo, man. He's younger. <laughs> Did I say Cujo? <laughs> <laughs> That's two bears in and half a joint. Sorry. So you're going with who? I'm going with Henry Cejudo, man. Really? I think he's, uh, he's younger. 
he's more on fire as well. I mean, he's I think he's a better matchup for for the win. Francis, I mean, that's just someone's getting fucking put to sleep right now. Uh, somebody's I, getting put to sleep. Whoever of course. whoever can land hard first. I say, um, I don't even know, but you know, Jeremy Stevens just is going to turn. It's going to turn into a brawl. Yeah, it's a great you know? matchup, man. Both are really good boxers, uh, right? The both are really really good with their hands. They have great stand up. Uh, I think that uh, Jeremy Stevens have, has a lot more power than Calvin, but Calvin can still put you out too with a, with a straight right man. He's he's got a lot of power as well, so it's a very interesting matchup. But I think Calvin will take that one. Excellent. Here we go, uh, Hardy against uh, Jorgen DeCastro. and you know Jorgen's been in the game a lot longer than you know Hardy. He's not been on the stage. Yeah. Hardy's been been at, but you know as far as an MMA or a martial artist, Jorgen's got a ton of more experience. Yeah. As far as the gym and you know technical wise, but you know. Him, he's an athlete, yeah. Hardy. You know what I mean. And he's yeah. been in the game a little while now. Even though he's a douchebag, and he's lost some fights. You know, his last fight, even though he got dominated, was like what a three weeks notice, if that, after coming off the Boston fight yeah. where he was in doing the inhaler in the fucking corner. Yeah. You know, he's an <laughs> <laughs> this guy. I didn't know. I didn't All know. Right, forget <laughs> it. He's an asshole. You don't <laughs> fuck him up. We're not talking about him anymore. I didn't know he, he was no, an inhaler. He has no fucking shot. All right, what are you thinking about that? I think Morgan's going to leg kick him a I couple think... of times and then catch him, and then he's going to fall to the ground. I think Jorgen's going to ground him upon him. You know, Hardy, he likes to hit girls. First not, not a Not fighters. Yeah, so that yeah, exactly. <laughs> people are people smaller than him. So so all right, that's a first round yeah. knockout. Uh, right hand. Him. All right. Uh this could be their third matchup, fourth match. I'm going Donald know. Cerrone. Right. I think Anthony Pettis is over the hump. Donald Cerrone he's gonna take that. All right. Uh last thing, uh I don't know about the women. I like the karate hottie and uh Espaza, is that her name? She was a but Yeah, uh, I'm gonna go with uh karate, I'm going karate. With. yeah. She's Even though a lot better. She grinds, but she tries to take you down too much. I think she's gonna catch her with some kind of fucking spin or some yeah. kind of crazy karate. Sparta has good some good good submissions. She's very good wrestler. Yeah. Sparta, you know what I mean? Uh, all right, uh, right here, and uh, I don't care about that. Sorry. You're right. Uh, I'm gonna go with Jacare, man. I think Jacare is much better on the ground, and uh, I think Jacare is gonna it can do enough in order to close the distance. Get it to the ground and just put him away. If that fight goes to the ground, it's over very oh, quickly. Oh, we know that. You but know. to give a uh, whole credit, he has been. On his back or had his back taken, and he was there for a long yeah, time. That ain't some, Jacare, yeah, though. you're right. All right, you know, Jacare is another me. class. Fuck me. Um, yeah, the his the ground's over. But what I see with Hall and his, he seems lack of days, like a slow start, kind of lack of. He's a slow starter, but sudden finisher. Yeah, he does, and he hangs in there through some, uh, some yeah. adversity. So he's a tough guy, man. I he, you can't sleep on him. You can't sleep awesome. on your eye, Hall. All right, well, that's that. That's cool. All right, last thing before I let you go, Brian, and uh, we close the show. One more thing with the Tiger King. I am the motherfucking Tiger King, people. I should have played that part. Look at that. Look at that. And then... Wow. Uh, one last thing. Oh, Tiger King video. Nicholas Cage, you're taking everything I work for, motherfucker. Wow, I'm the real you Tiger King. Yeah. And like fuck Carol Baskin. That wasn't even planned. <laughs> All right, with that said, Brian, uh, I know you're on Instagram as, uh, I got it right there, your, your tag right there, Relentless Lot Rossi. Um, you're training a little bit, you're getting in shape, you're hanging around with the boys at Triforce here yeah. and there. When the when the, the quarantine's over, you'll be in there. I'll be going by you. We'll be back in this room. We'll be setting up a couple of so things. We'll be, back. Uh, we'll be hanging out. Uh, you Actually, I bought your Xbox off of you, your old you Xbox. We're going to hook that up. I'm going to learn to fucking shoot people. And stuff like that. So I'm gonna get on the game inside. I'm just gonna cause havoc. I'm the guy that runs across the screen, and let's just be, and, and fucking diverts attention. You all kill each other. Fuck you. I'm gonna be that guy. So <laughs> with that said, Brian, any last words you want to say before I let you go? Ah oh, man, I'm good. Uh, you guys need any PCs? Come let me know, and uh, we'll get you hooked up. Oh, Don Don Richinus. He he just checked in. Don. Oh, yeah. Don Rich. Right there. That's my man. <laughs> that is my man right there. Don, baby. Don, you got to come down. I got face masks. You can come down. You can come down, Don. All right, with that said, Don, we'll have you down. Oh, actually, Don, let's t let's interview. And all that other shit. Well, the room's running now. Yeah, you want to call them I can interview people now. No, it's too late. We gotta go. I got to be at work at 3 in the morning. Oh, shit. I'm essential. 
Yeah, you dude, I'm working you. seven days a week, twelve hours a day to fourteen hours a day. That's how I. Yeah, four, that's how I'm buying four K cameras. This is gonna be like fucking ta- uh, King Tut's fucking yeah. tomb as gonna far be, as podcasting. This is gonna be the Tiger King in here. Exactly. And people, <laughs> last thing before I go, um, I'm thinking about renting the room across the way, which is twice the size of this. Which I'm gonna do. Half the room is gonna have a mat and a heavy bag, and when I have fighters in. You can demonstrate stuff, or I can have like a little smoker show of my own in the show. But yeah, it's across the hall and down the line. That is what's gonna happen. I'm gonna evolve, make the room bigger. Even though I love this, and I'm still gonna add shit to it, I might have to grow. I might have to have yeah. you know something else. But we'll see. Maybe we'll knock it down a wall down here. I don't know. But it's happening. It's coming. One more thing. NewEnglandMMA.org. Look it up. You gotta join the page. We will be having our first fighter rankings. New England MMA dot org first awesome. fighter rankings. You know, last time so, one of those was done. As far as legitimately, it was what Regional Fight Sports, the nonprofit that I you know do little things for. We had like six thousand followers on that. You know, we did one. People were really into it. Fight, you know, you're there. You were there. Fighters want to see where they stand. And I think our page is legitimately enough and what we're doing enough. Like, you know, Laz made a post today. If you don't want to be a part of the media or, you know, be a part of spotlighting these fighters here and giving them something to be excited about because, you know, either you think you don't like me or it's, you know, you're thinking, you know, our shit don't stink because we built a fucking website. We put, there's like 500 hours of computer work and shit going into this website. Absolutely. You know what I mean? Don't think it's just a Facebook Live and a fucking Facebook business page because it's not. Laws put a lot of work in this and no one else is going to fucking do it for free. No. And it's going to end up being huge. So you yeah. don't want to be a part of it. And New England needs it. Exactly. And let me just tell you, everyone's going to know. I, I don't want to call people out, but everyone's going to know who's a part of our panel and who wants to be involved in the vote. You know what I mean? It, it's going to happen. People want, you know what I mean? Just like you know who the judges are at fights, you're going to know who's voting on who these fighters are. There's going to be all the promotions, a few media people, and fans. There's going to be a percentage of each who's going to be doing it. You know, most is going to be with the promotions and the media. And the fans are going to get a percentage, too, that's going to count, which the fighters are along with yeah. the fans. Vote for yourself or whatever. But if you're not a part of the media and you don't want to get a board, shame on you. You know what I mean? Shame on you because it's only spotlighting the fighters. And if you don't like me, it's not about me. You know what I mean? I'm going to do this whether I got NewEnglandMMA.org or not. You know what I mean? So why not just jump on board? Because I'm not going away. Either is NewEnglandMMA.org. So with that said, Brian Rossi, Relentless relentless Rossi, thanks so much for coming on. Thanks so much for building me a computer. Absolutely, man. Uh, we got so much. I got the monitors. Heck, uh, not, it's not even hooked up yet. Yeah. So, uh, Brian, thanks so much again, man. Yeah. Boom. So from the Room Podcast, follow us on Facebook, on Instagram, under New England MMA. Dot org New England MMA on Facebook, New England Mixed Martial Arts on Instagram and Twitter. So with that said, we'll see you next week. We'll have another guest. We'll have someone calling in. I'll Skype someone in next week as I learn more what's going on. So, you know, we'll have the fights to talk about. That's right. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, maybe we'll get Jorgen DeCastro on, which will probably never happen, even though he loves me. But um, <laughs> he's going to be a busy guy once he wins that fight. I'm the last yeah. guy he can talk to. I'll get him next month. That's fine. Get him when he comes down. That's right. All right. We out.